In this micro lecture, we're going to use a common clinical conundrum to talk about some of the mathematics and physics behind diffusion weighted imaging. I recognize that this is all an oversimplification of how diffusion weighted imaging actually works. We're not going to talk about eigenvectors in different directions, but it gives you a good sense of how this is done. I'm sometimes approached by residents who have found an abnormality on an ADC map but there's no corresponding abnormality on the diffusion weighted imaging. The question is, is the ADC correct or is the diffusion weighted imaging correct? So let's go through how these images are created and see if we can track down what you should do when you see an abnormality on ADC that's not present on the DWI. This is the equation, mathematical equation for diffusion weighted imaging. Let's break this down a little bit. Diffusion weighted imaging is the signal intensity that we see on our usual grayscale DWI. How do we get that? We get it by combining different things. Basically, this is a T2 star weighted image. Uh, it's a T2 weighted image, but that little star means that we don't refocus uh, halfway through the imaging so that we, it gets very blurry and it's very susceptible to field inhomogeneities. That's why it looks uh, like an ugly T2 weighted image. ADC is the value that we really care about. That's the apparent diffusion coefficient and that's what we're trying to get at. That's the diffusibility and the rest of this is all distraction. B is a number that we control. We put this into the scanner. We plug it in. At my institution, we use a B value of 1,000 when we're doing DWI, but you can use 500, you can use 2,000. It's an arbitrary number that we multiply the ADC by. Notice that this is a negative exponent, right? A negative exponent. So as ADC gets larger, diffusion weighted imaging gets darker. As ADC restricts, diffusion weighted imaging gets brighter. That's the effect of that negative exponent. So we control the B value and it's a negative exponent. Now, looking at this again, you can see that there are two components that make up DWI. That's why they're in two different colors. One component is the exponential component, true restricted diffusion. That's what we're trying to detect when we do a diffusion weighted image. The other component is this T2 weighted component. And when you have bright signal in your DWI, it might be because you have true restricted diffusion, or it might be because the T2 star is bright. We call that T2 shine through, and it's the biggest problem we have with diffusion weighted imaging. Is that brightness we see on diffusion weighted imaging the result of true restricted diffusion or is it the result of T2 shine through? The way that we're going to solve this problem is by doing the experiment twice. We're going to do two diffusion weighted imaging acquisitions. The first time we do it, we're going to get B equal to 1000. And this gives us our nice, pretty diffusion weighted imaging that we use for most of our diagnoses. Then we're going to do it again. But instead of using B1000, we're going to use a B of 0. So what does that do mathematically? Well, if B is 0, then that entire exponential term drops out. So now we have two sequences, our diffusion weighted sequence, which is the pretty set of images, and our B0 images, which are an ugly set of T2 weighted images that usually come either before or after our diffusion weighted images, and we've learned to ignore them because they don't contain useful information. Or do they? Let's explore a little more. What do we do with this B0 image? Well, we take our diffusion weighted image and we divide it by the B0 image. We just divide these mathematically. And the result is that the T2 component cancels out. And that gives us what we call an exponential diffusion coefficient map, EDC or EADC. And that's just the exponential component, just E to the minus BADC. 
Now, if we want to, we can go ahead and solve that equation. We can take the natural log and divide by B, and we can actually find ADC, and then we can perform ADC maps, which are exactly what we've been looking for. Both of those sequences, the EDC maps and the ADC maps, both solve the same problem. They get rid of the T2 component, so we don't have to worry about whether the signal we're seeing is T2 shine through. We know that what we're seeing there is true diffusion. If you like your abnormal diffusion to be bright and you like the exponential curve, then you can use the EDC map. If you like to flatten the curve and you like to look for dark stuff, you can use the ADC map. It's a matter of personal preference. Both EDC and ADC maps accomplish the same goal. So let's go back to our original problem. Which of these two is correct? Is the normal diffusion weighted image correct or is the abnormal ADC correct? Well, the key here is going to be in our B0 image. The diffusion weighted image looks uniform all through that temporal lobe. But if we look at the B0 image, we see that there's an abnormality of the B0 image. This is an artifact. It happens to be a wraparound artifact in this case. But that artifact is going to propagate through the mathematics and onto our ADC map. There's nothing wrong with the diffusion in this case. It's just an artifact that appeared on the B0 images and then got divided into the DWI and came out on the ADC map. There is no abnormal diffusion here. It's all B0 artifact. If you never look at your B0 images, you'll never be able to find that artifact. So the answer to the question we posed in the beginning is, if you see an abnormal ADC, but a normal diffusion weighted image, Go to your B0 images, check out the B0 images, and see if there is an artifact there that has propagated through onto your ADC maps when there's really no restricted diffusion there. So in summary, bright signal on a diffusion-weighted image could be real diffusion abnormality or could be T2 shine through. We use EDC and ADC maps to eliminate the T2 effects and look for true restricted diffusion. These EDC and ADC maps require a second acquisition that we call the B0 images, and we frequently ignore those B0 images. But artifacts on the B0 images can propagate onto the ADC maps, and they might be confused for restricted diffusion. To answer the question we posed at the beginning, trust your DWI.